all right what is going on everybody welcome back to another roblox studio video in this one we're going to be going over the universal constraint and in this one i'm going to try and explain as thoroughly as possible what it does how it functions and try and get you to learn what it does and enable you to use it in your game or something like that and i do hope after you're done watching this that you take something away and you learn something from it and you're able to do something in your game or something like that which would be awesome and before it starts, I would appreciate it if you guys subscribed, liked, and shared the video. Share the video with all your friends, family, your cat, your neighbor. I don't care who you share it to. It helps me a bunch. And I would be very appreciative if you did that. Enjoy the video. What we're going to want to do first here, of course, is to insert a part into our workspace so that we have something to work with. And I'd advise making two parts right off the bat by duplicating the first one because you're going to need to work with two for the universal constraint. I'm also going to turn on all my options for constraints and those ones being the show welds, constraint details, and the draw on top options that you'll find in the constraints section in that tab. And I may turn them on and off throughout the video, so you might notice that. You're also gonna wanna make sure one of the parts are anchored and another one is unanchored. That way the constraint you apply on both of them can move where one part will move and one part won't. And uh, that basically means one part will be holding the unanchored part. The anchored one will be holding the unanchored one. So first I'm gonna attach the universal constraint to the parts, and then I'm also gonna test it to give myself and you a basic feel of how it's gonna work and how it is working. And based on what you can see, the attachment on the unanchored part went straight to the top of the other part where the other attachment is. I also decided to move it around just to show how the universal constraint moves with the other part, rotating the anchored one, which ends up causing the unanchored one to move, spin, turn, or whatever ends up happening to it. Sometimes it may even glitch out. Overall, this allows me to establish an understanding of what the universal constraint is doing and further allows me to explain it better. And throughout the video, I'm going to repeatedly do this, showing you multiple tests for multiple scenarios of me using the universal constraint. So what the universal constraint actually does, and what its function is, is to align parts so that they remain perpendicular to each other. The constraint will make it so when the part is moved, swinging, or anything happens like that, it will remain perpendicular to the other part it's constrained to. You can also enable the constraint details and draw on top options so you can see the constraint. You can do the same in testing mode and in both you will see that there are two bars that cross each other and these will form a 90 degree angle. And this is what you would consider or it would be known as being perpendicular. In test mode you can even manipulate it and move it yourself and have those turned on and see how it continues to stay perpendicular even while moving. Getting into the universal constraint properties here, this one doesn't have many properties that you can change, but you can change if it has limits or not. By selecting the universal constraint object, you can access its properties, and then you can find and click the box for limits enabled and enable or disable it. When you enable it, you can specify a max angle and a restitution. And as we've discussed in previous videos, the max angle will be the limiting property, determining the maximum amount that the part can rotate on its axis. In the video, I end up keeping it to the default limit of 45 degrees, and you can do the same. Changing the restitution option will change its elasticity, and as we've discussed in previous videos, it's known as how extremely the part will try to return to its original position. And that's pretty much going to do it for the overall functionality of the universal constraint. And throughout the rest of the video, I'll just be messing around with other things you can do with the universal constraint. And at the end of the video, I also play around with a new physical dragger mode to see how the constraint moves when I move the part around. Otherwise, with the new physical dragger mode, I'll be making and thoroughly exploring that in a separate video.
Here I create two different universal constraints and see what happens when there are two enabled at the same time. And basically each will still try to remain perpendicular to the other part that it's attached to, even while there's two working. And here, And here, finally, I am testing the part, as I said earlier, using the new physical dragger mode, allowing me to see how the constraints move with the part and change how it moves. Once again, I'd like to say that I'm going to make a video for this in the future. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this video the, for the universal constraint. If you guys enjoyed, please make sure to subscribe, like, and share the video. If you want more content like this, please like the video. I really hope you carried something away today, and I hope you learned something, and you are able to use something that I taught you today in your game. That would be great. And last but not least, I want you guys to check out the links down below. We've got stuff like the groups, the Roblox group, the Discord. I've got my Twitch. I, I Twitch stream almost every day at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And um, if you want to see something that I haven't recorded yet or I haven't covered, please make sure to leave that down in the comment section. Leave what you want to see and stuff like that. And so I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you enjoyed.